let's take a look at some of our options for the direction that we could go with this material or this area here. We could do a nice enamel. We have like a rubber coating. Kind of a thicker enamel. Actually, I don't even know if that's enamel or not. Yeah, I think out of all these, let's go ahead and, and uh, explore what a nice enamel paint will look like. And we can just go ahead and use that lovely orange color, because why not? So I'm going to make a new folder. And we'll call this enamel. It's not a bad idea to say, like, powder coat black. In case we want to duplicate it and have a different color. And we can say enamel orange. And then inside the enamel, I'm going to put a fill layer. Make sure it's actually inside there. There we go. So you can see what that looks like. Welds is not like it's actually fine where it is, but it's possible that whatever we do in some of these higher folders will uh, stop with what's going on with the welds. So just to be aware of that, we should be careful. But normally what happens is what, whatever the layer is that you add on top, it'll it'll do a like an add or linear dodge. So it basically just blends in so you can see even though our new enamel has stuff there, it's preserving the height map information underneath it. So let's start by making this orange and we can just, I think we can sample directly. Yeah, so that's pretty convenient. And we'll go for the more saturated version of it. And it has a little bit of a height on it. I like to keep these things separate. But I think in this case, I'll just put it on the same layer as far as like this kind of subtle, whatever, these tiny little dents, which I think is just a feature of the enamel. So that'll go here in height. So we need to go to the alphas. Actually, this might be like grunges or procedurals. And I'm looking for something that actually might not be bad. I want something with like uh, that kind of warbly pattern in it. That's pretty good too. We'll try this. We'll start with this one and see if it works. Uh, actually, no, I need to make a new layer. I, I always uh, always think, oh, I'll cut this corner, and then I remember why I never cut the corner. So we'll make a new layer. I'm going to call this one color, and I'm going to make this one texture. We're still in height, so I'll hop back over to base color so we can kind of see what's going on. In color, I no longer need to be contributing any information on this layer to anything but color. And on texture, the only thing I'm going to be contributing is height. And you can see neither one of these are uh, contributing to the metal. So I'm going to turn metal back on for color so that we are sure that we don't have any uh, metal contribution. So I can just zero it out here, see what it looks like otherwise. And we can also see that we're inheriting the roughness from below, which is all completely fine. We're going to totally overwrite it because we don't actually want to have any of this roughness information. Because again, this is the basically our, our uh, patina on the base metal and it shouldn't have any direct, like if we have the base metal showing through, let me just show you what I'm talking about. I'll make a black mask and I'm going to be painting, we'll go to brushes and I'm just going to paint solid white. So there should not be a continuation of what's happening on the base metal through the paint, right? The paint should have its own information there. So we will, that's why I wanna make sure that we overwrite this. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the mask. Not really, well, actually, let's just do add mask with color selection, and then we can pick our color. And I'll go ahead and throw that on there too. And we can increase our tolerance a little bit so that we don't have that weird little edge in there. There we go. So back to texture. And texture and roughness are not the same thing. They may kind of inform each other, but uh, we'll deal with the roughness here shortly. So we've got our, our height map here, and I'm going to add a black mask. 
And then well, before I do, I'm going to give it just a little bit of value so that when I apply the mask, we can see the difference. And where was that? Our grunges. That was this guy. So I'm going to put the uh, mask into a fill layer in, sorry, the, the grunge into the fill layer of our, of our mask here, like so. And you can see exactly what I was going for. Obviously not. Okay, so what we need to do here is just tile it a million times and significantly reduce our height information. Probably, so at a certain point we're gonna lose, like I can tile this and it'll just stop looking different, but I don't think we're there yet. We might be close to it. Might have to increase the, the texture set settings to see what's going on there, but I'm not going to worry about that immediately. I'm going to add another layer here. And I'm going to call this one roughness. And it will only be contributing to the roughness. And now that I've done that, you can see I am no longer getting any information from the, uh, the, the patina below, right? That's kind of the difference. I'm just getting a solid value, which is much closer to what I'm looking for for this. Let's kind of revisit this, this paint here. This paint, uh, paint texture, just to see if I can find something that might work better. I'm going to increase my texture resolution. This will generally slow things down considerably. I don't know what it's going to actually do on this project. But there you can see that's what we're actually getting. There is kind of some tiling in here that wasn't immediately apparent uh, before. So, let me just set that to a nice round number. All right, so we, we we have this one on there now. It's not terrible, but it's not great. I think I was going to look at this one, so we can just try it. Yeah, that's probably okay. And then also what needs to happen is the roughness value needs to go down. Because this is pretty glossy, and you can almost see individual branches in the reflection. So that might be okay for a starting position on the paint. You are going to want there to be some variation in the roughness as well. And to do that, I think I'm going to make two roughnesses. So I'm going to make roughness gloss. I'll just duplicate it. And call this roughness rough. And then this one, I will reduce the roughness value a little bit so that it gets a little bit, you know, uh, duller. And then add a black mask. And into this, I'll add a fill. And into that, I will add any of these. It doesn't really matter. Just looking for some breakup. Let me scroll up a little bit, grab this fill here. I want to increase my tiling on it. And the rotation. Actually, rather than doing that, I'm going to do a triplanar projection, which will make it like I'm seeing it go up and down here. I want it to be going up and down, and now it is going up and down. Before it was doing the UVs, and the UVs, their rotation is totally arbitrary, just based on whatever made sense for that, and I don't really need to take that in consideration while I'm applying my drip map here or whatever. So you can just barely make it out, kind of in the, in the like this kind of stuff right there. There's kind of working. So anyway, all of this is non-destructive and easily tweakable, which we will continue to do in the next video.